overriding memory of the ga game was we got battered. <laughs> <laughs> we got absolutely battered, you know what I mean? And uh, obviously that period of my, of, of my time is something I bitterly regret, but um, I couldn't have asked for any more from the club. So welcome to the first edition of Ross Meets. Today I'm joined by former town midfielder Adam Tanner. Adam, thank you very much for joining me. No problem. Very good. Pleasure. Um, we're here to talk about your careers from the ups to the downs. Every career in football has a beginning. Where, where did you start off? Well, my career started as a, as a youngster. I grew up in Whitton and I was playing local football at the age of 11. Um, I think you, could, you couldn't start before then. And now I got scouted by Tottenham. Um, spent a year or two at Tottenham. And then I was scouted again by Arsenal. I spent two or three years there up to the age of 15, 16. Um, and at that time they were sort of thinking about offering me the YTS scheme. Um, but I was going to have to move to Diggs in Islington. I wasn't too keen on that. At that point, um, and that's when Ipswich got involved. I was playing for Essex Schoolboys and uh, they approached me then. Cool. Um, at Arsenal, George Graham was there. Did you have any interaction with him or did you just... Past Croft or anything like that? No, no, I, I, I met him um, I met him a couple of times, very strict, very disciplinarian yep. sort of chap. Um, but no, he, he did teach me one good thing that I've held for the rest of my, yep. my life so far, is that you should always have a, a firm handshake, look people in the eye when you shake their hand. It's weird because when I shook his hand, I think I was only 12, 13, he, he made that point to me and I've never forgotten it. <laughs> because at that age, you don't really shape your hands, do you? No, I mean, it's more just... It was quite hard. intimidating. Yeah. But like I say, it's something I've, I've taken on and uh, I've actually said to a couple of other people myself. <laughs> okay. Well, hopefully my hand, my hand shape was that all right. That was all right. That's good. That's <laughs> I good. would have said. He was like, you straight away, stop the recording, <laughs> let's go. Um, so then you joined a town. You were still, you were travelling up? You didn't go into any... No, I, I was getting a train. Yeah. So uh, we had our jobs to do in the mornings. We were um, supervised by Trevor Curtin, who, who was the, doubled up as kit manager, coach driver. He would tell you he ran the club. <laughs> um, but yeah, we had to report to him. We had our jobs to do, cleaning boots. Who, our, who were the players back then you had to clean boots for? Can you remember? Um, Walkie. <laughs> uh, Brian Gow was there. He was there. Was we? You weren't allowed in the first team dress room. It was like a sacred place. You had to be invited in, or you 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 could only go in there if you were going to pick up their kit. Um, it was brutal, yeah. brutal environment for young lads. Um, I was lucky enough to sort of go up to the first team dress room quite young, but even then it was a sink or swim situation, character building. Then. Who was sort of around your youth team back then who was, um, came through and stuff like that? Well, the year above me was Neil Gregory. He played quite a few games. He famously scored a hat-trick, I think, at Sheffield United. Yeah, was, yeah. Uh, played in goal in other, in other games. <laughs> yeah. Very, really good goal scorer. Really good goal scorer. Um, and then uh, in my actual year, Lee Durrant played a couple mm -hmm. of games, but nobody really kicked on. Okay. Um, so yeah, it was. But, but then it was sort of from a couple of years below me was sort of the period of Tony Vaughan, Richard Wright, James Scowcroft, and then obviously Kieran, yeah. Kieran coming up and sort of blowing everyone away really and uh, being amazing. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Um, when you mentioned Joe Law, John John Law, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, what was he like as a, as a manager and to be around him and stuff like that? Yeah, he was amazing. I mean, he was he he was. As I say, disciplinarian, in, in, but in a, in a good way. You know, when he walked into the room, everybody sort of sat up and took notice of him. He, he could say one sentence and everyone had, he had everyone's attention. I think it was a mark of respect more than anything. Um, I think it's the way the game's evolved. He had the best car, the biggest car. <laughs> he probably earned the most money. You know, and he... he, he I, said, I, I, I don't want to sort of... Um, demean his 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 approach because it it was brilliant, but it it was sort of it was a, a respect rather than fear. Yeah. But um, he was the manager, and every everyone, as I say, what I what I can remember when he walked in a room, everybody it, it went silent, and it was like right, the gaffer's here now, let's let's concentrate on what he's got to say. When he was in charge, of course, you made your debut when George Burley came in, but did John at any point? maybe mention you could be making your debut under him yeah I was subbing one game I yeah. mean we did have a number of injuries yeah. um, me and Neil Gregory was sub against Wimbledon um, but then I would tra I travelled quite a lot yeah. and he was earmarking me thinking we were going to uh, he was earmarking me to play or be sub in the Blackburn away game it was we 
we needed to win or draw to, to stay in the Premiership. I think it was the famous time when Mark Steen. I mean, too, you're too young for this, but um, I do, weirdly enough, I do. I do yeah, sort Mark of, Steen yeah. scored for Chelsea yeah. against Sheffield United, and we stayed up. Yeah. And, I, and he pulled me aside in the hotel and said, "Look, it's too much of a pressure game for you to to be involved in," which I understood. And then he he the following, I think, round about Christmas, he got the sack. Okay. Um, so yeah, but he, as I say, he's he instilled a lot of good habits. Yeah. You know, all, his training was very good, very. Um, like high intensity, but he was all about habits and and doing a lot of repetitive stuff. Yeah. So it became second nature, and it, is, well, it stood me in good stead in 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 a lot of respects. And of course, George Burley came in. Mm. Uh, he gave you your debut, and what a debut that was! Scoring on your yeah. debut at Portman Road as well. Yeah, you know, New Year, nineteen ninety-five. You know, mm. fantastic. Yeah, I mean, George came in. He only had a few days. Um, I think his first official game was Everton away. Yeah. And um, I travelled, wasn't involved, and then we did a training session uh, just a couple of days prior to the Leicester game, and I was involved. We did a bit of shadow play, and I was yeah. thinking, oh. And then he pulled me and said, I'm going to play you tomorrow. And it was all, it was all a bit surreal, to be honest. Yeah. I sort of went home, and um, it didn't really sink in. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the debut couldn't have gone better, really. I, mean, I, I, I don't remember a lot. I mean, I remember the goal. I remember I got... Got concussed and sort of came. I remember I got taken off, and I remember sitting on the bench and thinking, "What am I doing here? Why is why? you know?" What I mean, a bit. It was all a bit surreal. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it was it was amazing to sort of when you look back, and I know it was on match of the day and things like yeah. that, and you, you sort of in the Premier League as well. Well, exactly, yeah, and, you know, and, and it was just at, just at the beginning of the the um, phenomenon of the Premier yeah, League. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was just taking shape, and it was just gathering, gathering a bit of pace. Um, so yeah, it was amazing and something I'm very proud of. Yeah. Then your next game was in the cup <laughs> against Wrexham. Yeah. Um, standard sort of thing when it's start of January, you've got a league game, you've got an FA Cup game. Mm. Um, I hear that it wasn't as, <laughs> it was more eventful in a way. Yeah, it wasn't. Well, as I say, we were Premier League and they were, I think they were League Two, what was the old League Two. Yeah. So um, it was a boggy pitch, I can remember that. It was a horrible day. Uh, we played awful. Um, but we got back, we were 1-0 down, and then I'm sure it's David Linegan scored in the last minute to yeah. equalise. I kicked off, launched the ball in the box, and I've gone in like a bull in a china shop and clattered into someone. Yeah. Penalty, lost 2-1. So. Do you think that was your youth kicking in there a little bit? Yeah, maybe, just sort of a bit of exuberance, bit just of, you know. But I mean, I, I, to, be, to be honest, I can remember... The gaffer after George was well, didn't blame me at all. Sort of blamed all the others, yeah. the senior lads. Why was, scoring before? Yeah, why was I in that position and things yeah. like that? But it was a bit of a bit of a nightmare. Because yeah. <laughs> you were you were a midfielder. Was, did mm. you play any other positions? I know we're going back to start your career. Did you play any other positions? Yeah, I started as I say, started midfield. When I got in the team, I was playing on the right. Okay. Um, when further on in my career, I played the majority at the back. Um, but yeah, mainly mainly midfield or defender. Now, let's get to the big talking point. Mm -hmm. The goal against um, Liverpool at Anfield. The first win for a Lichter's Town team at Anfield as well. Yeah. What's your first thoughts straight away on that? Um, well, yeah, I mean, it's as I say, I've just, it's just gone this weekend. I've been a guest at the club, um, yeah. sort of 25-year anniversary. It's, it's, it's amazing, really, when I, I think that time's gone and elapsed so quick. And I can still remember, I don't... I, I, my overriding memory of the game was we got battered. <laughs> we got absolutely battered, you know what I mean? And uh, Craig Forrest was like a man possessed. He, he made making saves that he had no right to make. Um, and I know I can remember the goal, but apart from, I mean, it was a bit of a heavy touch. And I, I know people say it was deflection. A lot of my mates do. But take it, take it. Yeah, exactly. Look in the record books. But um, it was over... It was, Again, it was a really windy day. I can remember that, and and just playing, being on the pitch along some, you know, some real like Ian Rush, um, you know, Ruddock, Redknapp was there, you know, McManaman. Yeah. You speak to Gavin Johnson about yeah. Steve McManaman in yeah, that yeah, game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, it was it was brilliant. But as I say, it wasn't until we was in the dressing room after the game, and Walkie said to me, he said, oh, "We've never won it," and I was like, "Really?" You know, and even then, I probably didn't realise. The magnitude of it, yeah. Um, 
But yeah, so, I mean, do you think of all the amazing teams? It's uh, been an Ipswich fan yeah. myself. Yeah. I grew up supporting, you know, the likes of Butcher Osman, the two Dutch lads, Walkie, yeah. Gaffer, the Gaffer. Yeah. You know what well, I mean? And and the phenom phenomenal teams they've had. Um, it's it's quite surreal, really, that they never managed to beat beat them. And what? So that was your second league appearance, playing mm. at Anfield and scoring the the winner. What was the like family members and stuff? They you know they must have gone. Good yeah. on Adam, you know, go on there. Yeah, so. I know my dad, my dad was there, which was great. That's good. Yeah, so we um, I travelled back with him. He went up with a family friend. Um, but yeah, it was amazing. You know, you sort of. Again, but again, I think it's a bit surreal. You don't really realise. It's sort of when you take a step back from it, yeah. You know, you know, but maybe after a couple of years, I always remember Steve Sedgley saying to me, you know, it will go really quick the first first sort of few games, yeah, and you won't remember a lot. Trying yeah. to hang on to it, and he was absolutely right. You yeah. know what I mean? But yeah, no, a really proud day for me and my family. Yeah. Cool. You went on to I think made ten appearances in the Premier League that season. Mm. Unfortunately, we got relegated. Mm. You wasn't in the nine nil defeat, were you against Man United? No, Al Trafford. I'd. Um, we played Newcastle on the Tuesday night and we got beat 2 0 and we were awful. Uh, but again, playing, you know, like Beardsley, Janola, Robert Lee, you it's know, amazing, player. amazing team yeah. to be on the same pitch. You know, it's again a brilliant experience. But um, yeah, I, I had family all booked to go to Old Trafford and George decided that he, would, he wasn't, I didn't even travel. Okay. I was gutted. Yeah, yeah, because I'll go to Old Trafford, you know. Yeah, so, yeah, and I've never been there, never been there at all now. Oh, it's oh, wow. never been there. So I was really up, well, you know, but as I say, just took it on the chin. And then yeah. uh, I remember being in Chumpster Town Centre when all the tellies used to be in all the, like, Dixons and whatever, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and I saw Andy Cole with a with a ball under his arm. I was thinking, oh, God, he might have got a hat trick there. Yeah. Well, he got five and then... Nine. <laughs> yeah, it was like, yeah. What was the, the mood like? Because, of course, you, you were training probably the next day or a few mm. days later. What was the sort of mood like? Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't great, if I'm brutally honest. Um, I think there were some harsh words spoken in the dressing room because um, we had tucked them away on the Tuesday or Wednesday. I think it's Saturday, Tuesday, not even. Yeah, and I, I don't know, again, they had, at that time, they had the famous five, Klinsman, Dimitrescu, Sheringham, Barnby and Anderton, I think. Yeah. Um, under Aussie Ardiles, so, yeah. but I was brought back in for that game, but I think we were 2-0 down after three or four minutes, yes. we, I mean, it was 3-0, but again, you know, I think, you know, it was, although mathematically we weren't down, it was, I think when George came in, it was it was going to be a mountain to yeah. climb, he understood that, it was going to be a re rebuilding process, mm -hmm. for me personally, to, to play 10 games in a premiership, score a couple of goals, and be on the pitch with some, some absolute legends yeah. and superstars. You know, it's something that I'm I'm proud of, yeah. um, and something that you know no one can take away from me. Was, was you aiming to hopefully play more in the Premier League? You know, when you're at town, you're hoping, of course, we're going to stay up and stuff like that. Were you hoping, aiming to to do that? Yeah, it's it's, it's every you know everyone whatever line of work you're in, you want to be the best. You yeah. know what I mean? And and for me personally, yeah, to 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 make my debut in the Premier League, you wanted to stay there. You know, but as time uh, elapses, you, you need to be realistic. You need to see where you're going to, you know, evolve as a player. I always remember Brian Hamilton, brilliant, brilliant coach, lovely fella. He he said to me one day, everyone finds their level, yeah. you know. And unfortunately, not everyone's going to be a Premier League player. Yeah. Um, I don't ever class myself <laughs> as that. You know, I played there, and and that's something I'm proud of. But um, yeah, I, I'm, as I say, I, I'm. You sort of set targets. My target as a youngster was to play for England, play in, play in the first division. Premier League yeah. wasn't, you know, and I, 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 did, I did one of those. Did you um, play youth for England or no, anything no, like that? No, no. I, I got into some camps and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, got you? into the uh, last, I think, 32 for okay. the schoolboys. Yeah. Um, we had, a, I mean, it was Ryan, he was called Ryan Wilson then, but it was Ryan Giggs and Nicky Barnby were up front. Yeah. You know, so we had a good team. <laughs> Definitely. Um, of course, then we got relegated. Who would say were the the key players for you in that in that squad? Who you know we were good friends with. Good, you know, um, in the in the relegation when we came down. Yeah, down and then just. Um, I was good friends with Steve Sedgley. We used to travel in together. He used to come through from Enfield. Um, Frank Yallop was a brilliant character, you know. But as I say, I was more one of the younger lads. Um, we had some big big players in that. Yeah, Marshall was around. I mean, he was. He was a big character. Yeah, or did we, he have a maybe shade off that, that point? Um, he sort of changed, didn't yeah. he? 
but he was ruthless. Yeah. He was a brutal character within the dressing room. Same as Steve Sedgley, you know what I mean? You, it was a bit of a, it was a, a tough place to be, like all football dressing rooms. Yeah. You know, his character, I, I don't think it's probably allowed as much today. I think it's evolved. Yeah. Um, You've got a lot but, more young kids. Yeah, like but it was character building, you know what I mean? Yeah. We, we had two separate dressing rooms, and if, if you weren't in the dressing room, we had kit numbers, you, you couldn't go in there. As a, and if youth team players only went in there to get the kit, and if, if anyone was a little bit cocky, you certainly got, you certainly yeah. got pulled down a peg or two. Yeah. Now, who, you got any good stories from back in the day, any players, anything like going, you know, nights out and stuff like that? Uh, or? I don't know that I fucking say it really on camera <laughs> okay. without people getting in trouble. <laughs> Um, well, I mean, I'm, I'm. Or maybe like you know, because of course, when the season finishes, you, you know, we'll go on yeah. holiday and stuff. Any good like holidays and stuff like that? Do you travel? You know, who was? Uh, Danny Sonner was a good one. Yeah, Danny. Danny, Danny Sonner. He's a model was... now. I think Danny. I think he's a model and actor now. Is he? Danny, I think so. Yeah, yeah. Model. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he was always good. I mean, I'm really close still to Jason Cundy. We we had you know we had some good times. Um, yeah, I mean, we had got up to a few little high jinks and that, yeah. but nothing nothing really too too excessive I yeah. don't think yeah. was there was, you could sort of say in the 90s there was a sort of drinking culture weren't there mm. um, we're going to go on to of course the drugs ban and mm -hmm. stuff like that um, who was there sort of to support you and stuff like that because you know got announced um, who was sort of there sort of yeah it, so I'll be honest with you um, obviously that period of my, of, of my time is something I bitterly regret but um, I couldn't have asked for any more from the club mm -hmm. From top to bottom, you know, when it got announced and I was I was called in and um, you know I was in front with George and David Sheepshanks and yep. and they were brutally honest with me. Tell tell us the truth. What's this? I explained the situation. Explained it wasn't a, a, a daily. It wasn't a habit. It wasn't anything that they needed to be concerned of. It was yep. a, it was a stupid error. Um, and then they were they were brilliant. They sort of backed me hundred percent. Um, I think they needed to look look into my eyes. They said it to me, or well, David did especially. He needed to know. He would tell whether I was lying. He, and he said if he if he felt that I was telling the truth, they'd back me, and they did. They were absolutely brilliant. Um, I I'd, I'd, I'd done my ban. I think I got I got a three month ban. It was it was it wasn't a good time. I mean, it was horrendous. You yeah. know, I thought my, I had my career hanging by a thread. For my family, my parents, it, it was horrendous. But um, you know, it's because it, were you were you living with your with your mum and dad still yeah. then, or yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, and I had to do like a statement outside their front door, and they yeah. press vans around their little cul-de-sac. It wasn't yeah. great. It was awful, you know what I mean. But luckily, I've got a I had a good family network around me, and but I think vitally important was the support from the club. Yeah. Um, and yeah, they were they were great, and I I think I came on a sub. I'd had quite a good start to the season, which is annoying. Yeah. Um, scored a few goals, and I came back for Birmingham, and I came on a sub, and I got a really good relation. That's, good. That's bad ass, actually. You know, yeah, so. I mean, I, I got a lot of letters of support. I think not all support. You know, I got I got, I got some some bad letters, but yeah. you know, but everyone's got an opinion, and it's. I'm sure if it happened in today's society, it would have been a lot worse. Yeah, you think now with media coverage, social media, yeah. and stuff, people will just. You just bombard and different things. Um, yeah. Where so you you came back against Birmingham. You played for the rest of the season. Did you just want to put that behind you and you know? Do you think how old were you when that happened? Um, I think I was twenty three, twenty four. So yeah, I mean it was like I said. It, but unfortunately, you can't sweep it under the carpet. It's yeah. always going to be there. And to this day, it's always there. Yeah. I saw something you put on Twitter about questions. Yeah. And some of them are alluded to yeah. that. Yeah. You know, I can't. It is what it is. I'm, I'm yeah. not naive enough to think it's going to disappear. Um, yeah, but from from my personal point of view and and the clubs, it was it was once once the ban was over, that was it. We'll get on, focus on the football, and that's exactly what we did. Then, of course, you kicked on playing the championship. You, of course, went on to make eight seven appearances for the club, scoring eight goals. Um, what would you say? I'm sure was your best moment, but from mm. there, from the drugs ban, everything. What was your next step there? Where would you want, where did you want to go? Um, I wanted to become a regular in the team, and I had yeah. periods of that. I wouldn't ever class myself that I really got in and established myself. I did for for periods, um, but we had an evolving squad, mm. um, and George was building building something really special, um, leading up to the promotion in two thousand, which I, I I just left on that beginning. Yeah. But um, like I say, I was heavily involved. I wasn't like you know. But, but right up until that last sort of six months when yeah. I was injured and then sort of lost my place in the squad, 
Um, sort of ruthless, and when when you get injured, yeah, so you just take yeah, oh, it is. I mean, it's like it now, and it is, it's, yeah. it's like it, you know, in any walk of life, really. But um, it's again, it's your character, how you deal with it, you know, how you bounce back from disappointments, injuries, setbacks, loss of form, whatever it is, you know, that's what builds characters. I mean, if you talk about just to pick another one of my close friends, Matt Holland, you know, he's strength of character, yeah. even you know when he wasn't playing probably as well and maybe could have been dropped yeah. he was still there looking for the ball and, and was putting himself up in in the firing line yeah. um, and I know George rates him as his best ever signing which Captain is fantastic yeah, yeah yeah but um, he as I say he, what, go, going back to that you know when the hurdles you have to overcome them yeah. it's how, how you get over them how you bounce back from disappointments I think that builds people as character and a strong character, be a professional footballer and be successful, you've got to have a strong character. Yeah, definitely. Um, there's one, one question on Twitter, someone said, you know, was there an element of too much too young? or? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know for that, because I don't know if I've got too much. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you know, as I say, I know people focus about the ban and that, but it really wasn't an issue. It was, yeah. it was, a, it was a naivety and stupid, stupidity. Um, you know, I was back on track and sort of moving. You know, it was it wasn't. Yeah, I wouldn't say too much too young. I think I I think I had I had I did what I did. I played played at the level I did. Yeah. And like I say, I hit my hit my peak. Played played the amount of games I did, and I think that was my time. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, I've got, certainly got no regrets. Cool. So after eighty seven games, mm -hmm. eight goals, you got released by town in two thousands. Talk about your later career. You went on to, of course, Peterborough, mm. then Colchester, and then you played non-league. Um, what was your time like that? When you got released, when did you sort of get told that? You know, what sort of... Yeah, I knew it was, it was going to come to a natural end, really. I wasn't playing. I was coming to the end of my contract. Um, sat down with George, and we had a, an honest discussion. Um, I'll be honest with you, I thought, at that point, Ipswich was my club. I was, I was, I knew it was coming, yeah. you know, and but I, I, mentally, I probably wasn't as well prepared as I thought I was um, and I went to Peterborough and I, I, I hate, not hated it that's too strong a word I didn't enjoy it you had, you had to travel probably then well no I was that. staying up there I was going okay. from Monday to Friday or Monday to Saturday yeah. Um, but yeah I, I, you know it's a completely different environment completely different club because what league were they in then Maybe league 2 or division yeah, division 2 yeah so the one below where we were okay yeah you know a different completely different manager in Barry Fry oh, Barry was there yeah oh. yeah I mean it wasn't he wasn't very hands-on coaching wise but he was yeah. around and and it was you know i didn't i, I didn't enjoy it and it, it didn't it didn't work out um then steve whitten who i played with at ipswich um was manager at colchester again went there didn't again probably my heart wasn't really in it yeah you know i'd, I'd leaving ipswich had sort of was, was the end for me yeah of course yeah um i did have a fairly good spell at canby island with a lot of, with neil gregory and cool. there was a few ex uh, pros there that was a good time we won the uh, FA Trophy um, but then it all came to a natural end then I'd sort of fallen out of love with the game and I just sort of decided enough was enough mm. so at that age or 28 that age, 27, yeah, 28, 28 29 I think yeah. it was yeah okay so then from there where did you sort of see yourself doing you know you, have you done different jobs and stuff like that yeah I've done all sorts of different jobs I've sort of um, done a bit of building work I've got a good job in London doing doing sort of high rise glasses or sort of the company I worked for did the, the gherkin things like that um, and then I've, I sort of decided I've, I've got a son who's um, he's 15 now um, I was sort of he was living with me and I was taking him to infant and junior school I had to be more hands on yeah, of course. Uh, once he went to senior school I had to sort of find something to do yeah. so I had a chat with my uh, girlfriend Vanessa and um, well, I sort of looked at sort of being retraining and what what could I do and then sort of we come up with something uh, being a mortgage consultant so I self trained with a bit of support from the PFA yeah brilliant um, and I managed to sort of pass ex three exams which was it was tough you know what I mean I sort of gave up and not gave up but while Jake my son was at school I sort of set a set time during the day to do studying but it was hard it really was hard but I managed to get through and I managed to get myself a job at Countrywide mortgage services which is you know a really reputable company and i've been there for two and a half well just nearly two and a half years now um did, so your son he knows that you're a former football player mm. you scored you know you probably got on repeat the anfield goal go here you go son and of course now with youtube and everything like that yeah. you know what, what does he think about your career and stuff like that in terms of 
you know, he he must like football now. He, must yeah, he loves stuff, he loves yeah. football, you know, but he's, he's more into his Ronaldo and <laughs> Messi rather than his dad. Yeah, did you play with Ronaldo? Yeah, I know. So, uh, no, no he, he's he's fully aware of it, but you know, he's he's got his own little life to lead, and he's you know, he we go we go regularly to to Ipswich. Uh, he enjoys. He's he's a primarily he tells me he's an Ipswich fan, but he's also a Tottenham fan. Okay, because of course you. You, you know, you said your family are. Yeah, yeah. So well, also, like Glenn that. Hoddle was my idol. Yeah. Glenn Hoddle's, uh, so, I, you know, he's aware of him and, and sort of Gaza. Um, but yeah, no, he's he is aware, obviously he's aware. Yeah. But, you know, he's got his other other things to concentrate on. Cool. Uh, we're going to stop that there. Um, thank you very much for joining me. Out.